our liquid cornea uses much of the same concept and materials as our solid implants. So the difference is that the uh, materials are not pre-gelled in a clean room, um, they are gelled in a patient's cornea. So this is just my own thinking, um, not sure if it's, you know, correct or incorrect, but um, I was talking to a colleague actually who's based in the UK and um, he was going on about how we're actually going to tackle the problem with the millions of people needing corneal implants and many of them being in the developing world where access to tissue is difficult and access to OR is also very difficult because you know we have access to ORs they're really expensive how are we going to manage that and if you think about it, um, what has been really, really successful and has reached millions of people are vaccines. Each person receives one or two syringefuls of the vaccine. Um, so, you know, could we do something as simple as to give somebody an injection? So you can also think of the case when you go to the dentist. If you have a hole in your tooth, the dentist fills the cavity. The dentist does not replace your whole tooth. So if you sort of merge these two concepts, having a syringe and filling a cavity, then um, you can see where the liquid cornea is coming in. We're using the materials that have worked in solid implants, at least in animals. And we're trying to make it safe so that we can actually put a syringe full of the materials to fill the... Um, perforation or an ulcer and um, just making sure that it's safe and using the materials that we have um, used in the past we have regeneration so in our first uh, publication we showed that we can get regeneration in our animal models in a perforation model as well as in an anterior lamella keratoplasty model and what we're trying to do now to actually get it into clinical trials is to make it more user-friendly. So it would be something that the surgeons can actually um, take out of a fridge freezer and just use it. So this is where we're at right now.